So three, almost four years ago, uh, January of 2018, anybody remember a presentation that I gave? A few people were here on how to make things work. It's a presentation. I had a, I had a 40 year old computer. It's now 44 years old. It still works. Um, and I walked through how to get things to go. And at the end of that presentation, I talked about other devices and things you could do to build projects of your own to make things work. One of them was this little thing. It's a Raspberry Pi. And I, I said something about, um, hey, you know, they got libraries of things you can do with these. And you can make all kinds of stuff with it. Well, somebody did. Craig, KM6LYW up here. Um, built a rather nifty little box. And uh, he's going to talk all about it. It can talk to anything in the world, almost literally. And I am waiting to hear more about this thing, because I may build one of my own. Craig, come on up here. Okay. All right. So. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm KM6LYW Craig and Cool. At least that's how I usually announce myself on the radio. This is actually my first meeting, um, not only in person, but ever in this club. I think I've been a member for maybe three years. I try and help out with the repeater vault and uh, uh, a lot of the Raspberry Pi and digital modes and stuff. Um, so like Greg said, we're talking about digital modes a little bit today. We've got some new technology to talk about. Um, so it's up there on the screen, and we're going to call it the DigiPi project. So over the past couple of years, uh, there's been an interesting device that, that came out. It was called an MMDVM or Zoom Spot. Raise your hand if you use digital voice modes with one of these little guys, right? If this is kind of a cool little appliance, and it'll do digital voice, it'll do C4 FM, it'll do uh, DMR. And what wasn't interesting to me about this was the digital voice modes. Those are cool, but it was how this was built, how this was managed. This is tiny. This is even smaller than the Raspberry Pi that Greg held up. And this is like a, a consumer grade appliance. You know, usually when someone says, oh, we've got another Raspberry Pi project, it's going to be convoluted, it's going to be complex, there's going to be command lines. Brian's going like this, like I'm right up to my left. <laughs> OK. So what I wanted to say, this isn't just another Raspberry Pi project. You don't need to know Linux. You don't need to know how to edit files. You don't need to know shell scripts. You don't need to be a programmer just to use a Raspberry Pi in conjunction with your amateur radio. So this is one of those zoom spots. And what this is under the hood when you take this apart, it's really a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's a really small Raspberry Pi. A lot of people dismiss it. They think, well, it's a single core computer. It doesn't have enough RAM. You can't run a desktop. And I don't want to run a desktop. I just want to run some cool amateur radio software, kind of like this MMDVM device does. Just runs a simple digital voice mode. But instead of a digital voice mode, I wanted to do like a digital voice transceiver. What we came up with is I built a different one. It looks just like that. And this is one here with a huge battery on the back of it. But this is a digital data transceiver, a data transceiver. So what does that mean? So data is anything that isn't voice, really. Um, this could be packet radio. This could be FT8. You guys are familiar with that. PSK31, keyboard to keyboard typing. Um, I was thinking if we can make a digital voice transceiver, let's make a digital data transceiver and basically build it exactly the same way. You don't need a monitor. You don't need a keyboard. You don't need a bunch of wires. You don't need to know programming. You just need, well, basically, all you need, like this is held up here, um, like, with the, like with the Zoom spot, all you need is a cell phone, maybe more specifically a web browser, maybe more specifically Android apps or iOS apps to interact with the device over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. No keyboard, no monitor. Just plug it into your radio, and all you need is your cell phone to completely configure the device and operate it. I'm probably going out of frame here, right? Yeah, Greg's, Greg's losing his mind. You're going out of frame. <laughs> All right. But I, I need to be able to see the screen. So there's a picture of it. Um, version 1.5 just came out a couple of days ago. Um, this does every digital mode you can think of. I'm not exaggerating, including CW. So this will do the modes that I mentioned. It'll do slow scan television. It'll do email on VHF, HF, global email. Um, It'll, like I mentioned, FT8, slow scan TV. Those are the new ones. That's why I keep repeating those. Those are, those are better to get working on here. And it's all running on a Raspberry Pi Zero uh, because it does one thing well at a time. It's a single board computer. The Raspberry Pi Zero is only $10. 10 bucks. 
for a single board computer that'll do everything that I just said. Um, of course, we add a, an audio card on top of that. So that's like the second layer that you see there. And just for fun, I added the, a monitor to the top of it so you can kind of see what it's, what it's doing. In fact, uh, that picture, it's an APRS mode and you can see all of the stations and their, uh, their icons there. So when you get this, you, you can build, you get the Raspberry Pi Zero, you get the audio board on top and you get the screen and you can build a push to talk circuit. If you have a VHF radio, maybe Greg, you can scroll down a little bit, there's this wiring schematic. And don't let the electronic part fool you. It's just, a push to talk circuit is really just a switch and we can do that with a single FET and a resistor. Keep going for me, Greg. There's the wiring diagram. That's how simple this thing is. At the bottom, we have the Raspberry Pi Zero, and then we have the top and bottom view of the audio card. And at the very top, we have a FET for push to talk. This isn't that hard to solder together. Hell, you could twist tie it together even if you didn't have solder. So you can use this with a VHF radio. If you have a radio with USB in the back, a USB port for cat control and audio, um, you don't even need to make the circuit. All you need is the $10 Raspberry Pi Zero and this DigiPi image uh, here uh, at Krager.org slash DigiPi. So when you first turn it on, um, you don't need to know a, a configuration file. You don't need a shell script to get it on Wi-Fi. Uh, it becomes its own hotspot. Your cell phone will see it. You connect to it, and you can configure your Wi-Fi. It's that simple, and it's now it's on your network. When you're in the field, it, like I said, it becomes its own hotspot. You don't need a Wi-Fi network. Or you can just talk to it over Bluetooth. So instead of starting and stopping Linux services like APRS, Digipedia, and Direwolf, and things like that, this just simple, has a simple web interface. If you want to start an APRS Digipedia, you press on on where it says TPR, TNC and APRS iGate. Um, the, the WinLink email client and server. If you want to be an e, uh, any, a WinLink email server, we can do that. It's not just a client, you can do both. The newest things we put in here are WSJTX FT8. These are graphics applications. Again, if you just have a cell phone, you can use FT8 in the field, like uh, for some it's on the air or field day or anything like that. Uh, with your cell phone and no keyboard, no monitor, you just use your phone. I use a tablet just because it's, it's bigger, but any Android or iOS device will work with this. And you can use any digital mode on your VHF or HF radio. If you can scroll down a little, another slide for me. This is an example of the email interface. This is WinLink email. You can go to winlink.org and get an email account and use email anywhere in the world. I think that includes Antarctica, as long as you have a, uh, an HF rig, obviously. It works great over VHF, there's lots of gateways, or you can become a gateway here in Northern California if, uh, on your VHF radio. And this is FT8 running in a web browser. Like I said, uh, all you need is a phone, or more specifically a web browser. We've got the FT8 client running on the DigiPi and displaying on your phone or, or tablet or, or, or Wi-Fi device. Uh, this is me running FL Digi. FL Digi, if you're not already familiar with that, will do pretty much the vast majority of digital modes. This is the one that does PSK31 keyboard to keyboard typing. This will actually do CW. If you don't know CW, I don't, sorry. Um, I, I, you can do that with the DigiPi. It, uh, FL Digi has a CW decoder and it will encode everything you type. So you can play with the CW guys down in the CW portion of the HF bands. That's what FL Digi does. It runs on the Raspberry Pi. In this screenshot, I think it's actually running on my tablet. And uh, you can scroll down a little more for me. You can see that was a, a tablet computer. So this screenshot here is FL Digi again. Only this one's in, uh, actually the first one was PSK31 keyboard to keyboard mode. And this is FL Digi running on an ICOM 7300. And the DigiPi down there plugged into the back of the ICOM. And then this one is actually in CW mode. I'm on uh, 7024, so that would be in the CW portion. So this is me pretending like I'm a really fast CW keyer, right? Because you can set your keying frequency, right? And it'll tell you what the, what the other guy's keying frequency is, so you can kind of like match his. You just type it in, and you just sound awesome. You just sound like the pro CW guy. And I don't know CW at all. But I do know how to plug a DigiPi, DigiPi into the back of my radio and pick up a cell phone. And that's all you need to know to do CW. Uh, on, on these systems. Let's go down another one. Uh, this is FT8. Some people either love or hate FT8. This is a really extremely low signal to noise ratio contact system. This is FT8 running in a web browser on the right, the DigiPi service menu in another web browser on the left, and pskreporter.info is on the bottom. That's just a website that shows you how far you're getting out on FT8. We could do a whole presentation on FT8, but uh, if, if you look into that, go, look into pskreporter.info and it'll show you how far your FT8 uh, client is really getting in the world. 
Slow scan television. Ever hear a weird noise in 14.230? It's all spacey noise. Well, those are slow scan television images going back and forth on HF. This has a slow scan television client on the DigiPi. Again, you can operate it with your phone, any device or web browser. You can transmit and receive. Uh, this is me putting together a, uh, a slide on the left. I transmitted it. And then there's SDR radios on the web where you can go see what, how bad your image actually made it you know, to the other radios around the world. And you can see uh, KA8ONG actually heard my image uh, coming over 14.230 uh, using uh, the slow scan television client on the DigiPi. So node services, NetROM. I don't know if you guys are into packet, a VHF packet radio. This actually is actually in a node. It can join the NetROM network here in Northern California. Um, this is like a bulletin board interface. Um, you can see who's on the node. It's kind of like the old 1980s bulletin boards. You guys remember those, right? And it made modem sounds and you could connect. But instead of using the old telephone service, we're using VHF, a two meter band. And the packet network is alive and well here in Northern California. So you can be a node and be part of that network and spin up a uh, bulletin board system. In this case, I actually got the source code to the old Infocom games. Remember Zork and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Um, they actually released the source code and I recompiled them and put it into the node here on the DigiPi. So someone can actually log into your DigiPi over the radio and play Zork. No practical purpose, it's just, that's just cool. All right, Orion. <laughs> So there it is, Zork 1, the great underground empire uh, running on the DigiPi node. Um, so with that, um, maybe you just scroll to the top of that web page for me. And if there's any questions about the DigiPi, um, this is a software image that I make. Um, you build the hardware yourself, works on HF or VHF. You can with the optional push to talk circuit that we have on there. It's on Krager.org slash DigiPi. And I don't think that's on. Oh, yeah, it's on the slide there. And normally I. I, I I asked for like a dollar on my Patreon page to get this software image or whatever, and, and it's been overwhelming. This it, has been a big success. All of you club members ask me for the password. I'll, a club, being a member has its privileges in this club, so anyone who wants this image, you've got it, just ask me. Are there any questions about the DigiPi and digital modes in amateur radio? Any questions, raise your hand. Okay. Just a moment. <sighs> Yeah, if I have to talk into a microphone, you have to talk into the microphone. Okay. So is there a reason why you went with the Pi Zero over the regular Pi 4? Yeah, I'm cheap and lazy. Okay. Yeah, the Pi Zero is 10 US dollars. The Pi 4 burns a lot of power. I'm, I, yeah, I would like to use it. It's a four-core system, a lot of memory. It's fantastic. This does one thing at a time very well. It really only needs one core. It's really that simple. Thank you. And this is 100 milliamps, by the way. This is like a bright LED. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you very much, Craig, and uh, great presentation.